Hey guys, it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs and today we're making a resin clock. So what we're going to be using is this wood panel and it's similar to a canvas as you can see, but it's made out of wood. It has a three quarter inch depth, so it's called a gallery depth. And as you can see, I'm also propping it up with these canisters here. And I've also taped off the sides already with tuck tape to protect the sides. We're just going to be pouring resin on top of this piece here today. So before we get started, what we want to do is make sure our board is level because we want our resin to sit on top and not be sliding off as much as possible. So it is slightly off here, as you can see, but uh, for the most part, it's going to work for what we need. And again, we're just going to be covering the top in this really beautiful pearlescent white resin. Uh, pigmented resin. So, and I had these coaster molds on the side just because I wasn't completely sure if I had mixed too much resin here. So, just in case I, if I did, I was just going to pour the extra into those molds. So, um, we're going to go ahead and just pour this right on top. Uh, in terms of sealing uh, the board or painting at first, that is definitely an option. I don't always do that just because um, I just look at the board and decide if I think it's going to be a concern for me or not. Uh, these boards are actually really nicely finished. They're very smooth and not very porous. There's no gaps. So I usually find I don't have to worry about that. But obviously, and of course, I'm covering it with an opaque resin. So um, I don't really think it's going to be too much of a concern, but if you feel more comfortable with that, for sure, like that's definitely an option. You would just do that first, let it dry completely, and then go ahead and add your resin on top. So we're just going to uh, push the resin slightly to the edges and uh, we don't really need it to drip over the sides, but if it does, it's okay because we have taped off the sides just in case. So once we get that all layered on top, we'll use our heat gun to uh, heat out any of the bubbles that we see, and then we'll let that cure. So in my case, again, I'm using a medium viscosity resin, which takes about eight hours to cure. So I will leave it overnight, and then we'll do the next step in the morning. It's the next day and we're ready to paint our design. So I have this coaster sample that I made, which is gold and pink. And I want to do that around the edges of this clock. And I've just put this mold in the center here just to kind of give me a guide of where the center is so that I kind of know how far I want to uh, push my glitter out for the design. Just gives me kind of a reference point. So, um, so yep, yeah, I've already mixed up my glitter with some gloss varnish. If you guys watch my previous tutorials for my ultra glam coasters, you will recognize basically the exact same technique we're going to use here. So, uh, we just mixed some of the glitter with the varnish to kind of give us, um, kind of a very, uh, liquidy kind of paste so that we can go ahead and add our design. So the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, try to get some glitter onto the piece and then once I feel comfortable with the amount of glitter I have on here I'll start working it uh, with the brush to uh, make the design. So um, as you can see just going along the edges first and again I'm just going to be pushing this out and you've seen me again if you watch my previous tutorial you've seen me do this technique it's the exact same the only difference here is that we're working with the circles so we're going to be trying to push everything towards the center on kind of a diagonal to so that we want all the spikes to look like they're pointing somewhere towards the middle uh, the middle point of the board so so of course this is going to take a little bit of effort to kind of work with it and see how we can get it to look the way that we want and it'll take a bit of time and you know me i like to be finicky with this so i will be playing around with it quite a bit but we'll
it up and uh, it's I just finished with it so uh, no drying time here before we start adding our pink so again same process with the pink and we're just going to go around the edges here and kind of blend it up a little bit but we're not going to go all the way up to the tips of where the gold is we're going to go about halfway of the gold we don't want to cover the gold completely but we on the edges we just want it to have that pink look to it and a little bit of blending upwards into the spikes so that it has um, that kind of a nice transition look and then once we're done doing that uh, we're going to go into the time lapse really quick here but once we're done doing that we will let this dry and again it will probably take about six hours or so to dry sometimes i leave it for a full day just to make sure and then we'll move on Okay, so it is the next day and we are ready to add our top coat of clear resin and as you can see I also painted the sides with the pink and uh, actually the pink and a bit of the gold we kind of mixed it and then did the sides so um, again same process we're using the canisters to prop up our uh, clock but we do need to protect the bottom so uh, we could use tuck tape as we did before and you would just kind of line that and then use your exacto knife to cut it around the circle but i'm going to be using this liquid latex instead for this piece and again you may have seen me use this in previous videos but for any of you that are new this is a really great product and it's not specific to this brand you can use any liquid latex it should be fine and we just want to literally paint this directly onto our board and what it's going to do is just add a layer of protection the resin won't stick to it and it actually doesn't stick to the board either it's kind of a very temporary um, kind of um, solution here for this specific purpose so we'll go ahead and we're going to get the whole board painted with this on the bottom edge here and then once it dries it will be completely clear and we'll know we're ready to start with Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes or so and now the liquid latex is completely dry and we are ready to add our top coat we'll do a quick check for leveling again and i have my resin here ready to go and again it's the one-to-one -one, it's a medium viscosity the same that we used before and i'm just using it as a top coat um, and this time though we're going to actually do the edges first because this glitter is somewhat fine, but it's also has is because it's an irregular or kind of a jagged um, glitter. It does have some rough edges, so I just want to make sure we're getting all that covered with the resin first. And so I will do that by um, just kind of 
you know, painting it on the edges and then we'll do the top here. So, and spread that around covering everything. Now we will be doing two coats of resin on this, the clear resin. So you don't have to worry too much about the first coat. We just want to make sure everything's covered and that we get all the bubbles out. But otherwise, um, you know, you don't have to be too particular here about um, the whole entire thing being, you know, perfectly covered just because we will be adding a second coat afterwards. So we will get the bubbles heated out of it and let that cure overnight again. Um, this time actually I'm using a torch. Uh, the heat gun would work just as well. Um, I just decided to use a torch on this one. So, so once we get the bubbles out, we will let that sit overnight. So it's the next day and um, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So the second layer I have actually already poured onto the piece here, but I wanted to show you the um, the little, you know, little, the gold pieces here that I'm using for the, um, you know, the, the number holders. So what I actually got was I had these really cute little gold buttons. So as you can see, oh, <laughs> as you can see the back, there is actually a little loop there for the, um, for it to be sewn onto a jacket or a shirt or whatever. But, um, I used some like metal clippers and I actually like, um, like a snips and I actually cut the back off of those so that they sit somewhat flat on the clock here. So I just sat those right on top of the clock in the uh, newly poured resin. So this way they will set as the resin sets. And again, using the torch to get the bubbles out. And this was the same process we did before, just this time we added those little buttons in here and uh, we'll let that sit again overnight. Okay, so we're all set to get started with the assembly. I bought this little mechanism kit off of Amazon, but the first thing we need to do is measure for center. So this is a 12 inch clock. So obviously we're gonna look for the center at six inches and mark it with a, a washable marker. And we'll do it on the vertical and on the horizontal to make sure we are centered. There we go. And then I will be manually making the hole with my drill, as you can see here. So I will do that quickly off camera and be back. And we're back. So there we go. And there's the hole. The main thing is just to make sure you go slow with your drill. You're not trying to crack the resin. So just going slow and you'll be fine. So here's the back piece for the clock. And what we'll need to do is it does have this this rubber washer, we slip that on and then we thread that through the back. And then the, there is a washer and a bolt that we need to use to tighten this piece in place. So we can just thread that on all the way down and I'll tighten it with my hand first, but I will need, um, some sort of little uh, wrench or something to to uh, to tighten that properly. So as you can see, 
There we go. And I'm going to go grab a wrench and we'll be right back. So here we go. Got a little wrench. This is an adjustable one, so this way it will uh, fit to whatever size we need. And as you can see, it definitely needed that bit of tightening. I'm just going to make sure it's the box in the back is facing the right way before we tighten it up. And there we go. So next what we'll do is we will add the hands and there are two different sizes of the scent of the holes. So this way you'll know which one has to go first. So I have the, um, our hands goes first at the bottom and I, these actually came in black.